Hello, I'm Tim Rogers, and you're watching uh, Kotaku.com. I'm going to show you a little bit of Octopath Traveler's Battle System. Um, here, you can see that it's about, I counted, it's exactly 12.5 seconds of walking around before you encounter a random battle, so be ready for that. Now, I captured a battle that is... Here's what's going to happen during this battle. I'm going to smoke these guys. They're uh, pretty strong, you'll see... The two enemies in the front have, by the shield marker, you'll see how many shield points they have. The guy in the very front has a three, the other guy has a two, and then the guy in the back has a one. So the enemy names will reflect the number of shield points that they have. That, that indicates what level they are. Now you'll notice under their name, you'll see the word vulnerable and then a list of whatever weaknesses they have. Now in order to know what weakness an enemy has, you need to use that weakness on it. Now I've got down at the bottom of the party here, Cyrus, who comes with an innate ability called Study Foe. So whenever you encounter an enemy that has a question mark in one of those boxes at the bottom, he will possibly uncover one of them. He might just duplicate, uncover one that has already been uncovered, in which case you just have to roll the dice again. So in this case, we have one guy who has four unknown weaknesses so he's definitely going to uncover one of them so let's see he uncovers that he's weak to dagger you'll see down there now of our four characters primrose uses dagger that's her primary weapon so let's see what happens with our first turn here so right here we've got my main character tressa now i've left this little you see the little drop down option under the word attack it says attack a single foe with an equipped weapon i have left that on for the purpose of this video that normally you can just press the Y button to turn that off, and uh, once you know what everything does, you can turn that off. So, Tressa has two weapons. She can attack with a spear or with a bow and arrow. So, for the sake of this battle, what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to boost her. So, let's we can take that back just three seconds here. So, you'll see up by her name, I've jumped back three seconds, up by her name at the top of the screen, you'll see she has one little dot. She's got these five little lamps. That's not cell phone service. That's how many boost points she has. So you start with one. Everybody in your party starts with one. And every turn you get one unless you use one. So she's going to use the one boost point she has. And the reason she's going to do that is so she can use her spear to attack twice against the enemy who has a weakness to spears and three shield points. So we're going to do that. Very punctual, very frugal thing to do. We're going to go ahead and target this guy. One, two. Weak, weak. You'll notice the shield, shield points have dropped down to one. Now, I've fought this enemy before, and I know he has a tendency to do a strength buff maneuver on his first turn 100% of the time. And that's uh, this is a very saga-like battle system. You're going to get a real feel for what the probabilities are that such and such enemy will do such and such a thing. So I know that Lizard Man 3 does gather strength on his first turn every time. So that's why I decreased his shield points by two, because in a second, I'm going to break him. So watch what's going to happen here. He gathers strength. You'll see he's now buffed. Primrose, I'm going to have her use Dark. So Night Ode, this is her dark damage to all foes. She comes with Moonlight Waltz, which does dark damage to just one foe. So you can either choose to do a little bit of damage to everyone or a lot of damage to one. So... She's going to use Night Ode here on all three. And the reason I'm doing it on all three is because I see that this lizard man in the back has a weakness to darkness. And this lizard man in the front also has a weakness to darkness. It sort of follows logically that this lizard man at the top, who is, again, a different level, a different type of lizard man, he might also possess a weakness to darkness. So we're going to do what you do a lot of in a saga-like battle system, which is basically place your bet here my bet is that that guy's going to be weak to dark and if he is then that will lower his shield points by one now notice up in the upper left corner you'll see what the turn order is so we'll see who's next i see that after primrose i have olberic who uses sword so i know that uh this guy in the back is weak to sword and i know that this guy in the front is weak to spear now what is the weapon that the guy in the middle is weak to all three of them are weak to dagger because we're in the desert, and that's near Primrose's town, and Primrose is the dagger-wielding character, so it logically follows that they would all be weak to dagger. 
this being her turf where she grew up. It's a case of story intersecting with, you know, uh, kind of an ice cold battle system. So I know that Ulbrich is coming up next. And then I know that these two guys, these two lizards are going to come up after him. So if I want to break all three of these guys, that's, that's the only way I can cancel those two attacks and get through this battle without getting touched. And that's my goal here. My goal here is to get through a battle without getting touched. And this is something you get a feel for. So we're going to have her use Night Ode. We're placing the bet. Is the guy in the middle weak to darkness? Is he? He is. So he's weak to darkness. So now we have two broken guys. And you'll notice I've paused it right here. Um, let's actually go back three seconds. I want you to watch. Watch this. Watch when the spell gets cast. Watch those two guys up at the upper left in the turn order. Gets cast. Boom. The guy who's broken gets thrown back all the way into the next turn. So not only can I see the order of this turn, I can see the order of the next turn. And that's very important as well. I want to point out this is an easy battle from early in the game. It's not... There's no spoilers here, and it does get a fair deal more difficult and complicated. So I have one guy who remains unbroken, and it just so turns out that he's the next guy that I'm going to fight. So if I want to break him, he's the next guy after Ulbrich. It will be his turn, and I know that this guy, Lizard Man 2, is definitely going to waste no time in attacking. He does not have a defense buff spell. He's going to attack me right away. So I want to break him if I want to get the untouched victory, which of course I do. So what am I going to do? I'm going to choose to attack with a spear or a sword. So I can attack one of these guys with a spear, one of these guys with a sword. What am I going to do? I'm going to try the sword on him. And again, I placed my bet. So here was my bet. This guy in the front, he casts a defense buff spell. He's on a higher level. He's just on a whole nother level of monster. So that's why he's weak to spear and dagger. And I just took a guess that this guy, like his slightly weaker brother, is weak to sword and dagger. That just sort of made design sense. So I hit him with the sword and that broke him. So that's a case of guessing. And not knowing what an enemy's weakness is is a, is a big part of this game. Now, Cyrus has a skill that you can use called Analyze that will sh just show you what an enemy's weakness is. And that's a very good skill to unlock early. Very good character to get pretty early because he's got all the elemental magic. So what is he going to do if we want to kill all of these guys? Well, I'm going to have him cast a magic spell. Okay? Or am I? So notice that Cyrus, by his name, he's got one little lamp lit up, one little dot, right? Now notice right now I'm highlighting Defend. Now, if I defend, look what happens in the next turn. That puts Cyrus up at the front of the turn order. So having him at the very front of the turn order next turn, well, it just means that I'm going to defend. This turn's going to end, and then immediately he's going to come up again. So why would I do that? Well, the answer is that'll light up a second one of these boost point orbs. So I'm going to do that. So now Cyrus goes back, and he just comes right back up. So he's now got two boost points boosted up and ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press that R button to do my double boost. One, two, and I'm going to pick Ice Wind. And now I'm doing, as you'll see, and let's just go back. Look at that. You'll see right here, the level numbers go up, and it says level three. So he's on level three Ice Wind. Let's watch him do that again. So Ice Wind is now on level three. The damage increases exponentially every time you boost it up. So if I were to wait for Cyrus to have three boost points, then this spell would just be unstoppable. It would go up to level max, four being the max. You can bank a total of five boost points. You can use a total of three in any given round. And when you use a boost point, the caveat is you don't get another boost point on your next turn. So he's going to use this. And this should do very nicely to obliterate those two guys in the back. However, this guy in the, in the front, he still lives. So the, ch the question is, what are we going to do? How are we going to stop this guy? Well, Primrose has two boost points lit up. So we're going to go ahead and just charge her dagger up. And you'll see that when we target him, I see that his name is in red. This is a, uh, a modern JRPG convention. The name being in red means he's pretty close to death. When he's reasonably close to death, it'll be yellow. So if he were yellow, I might want to do my double boost and then spend 
some of my magic points, or skill points as they call them, that's SP, in order to use a dark spell that would be charged up to level 3. I don't want to do that here because, I mean, I'm out in the middle of the desert. I'm on a quest. I'm on a journey. I don't want to use up too many of my skill points because the items that recover skill points are kind of expensive and I don't want to waste a whole lot of them. And that plays into the long aspect of the game. Now, unlike a lot of other RPGs, this being from the makers of Bravely Default, uh, it's, it's got a little bit more of a battle per battle feeling. You're not necessarily playing a dungeon so much as you're playing each battle one at a time. And I could elaborate on that, though we'd be here forever. All I'm really trying to say is that you want to you wanna be economical sometimes, and then sometimes you just want to go crazy and use your SP. Because every time you level up, and this is very important because you're collecting characters as you go through the game, every time you level up, it recovers your SP to max. So you want to just use them a lot. However, for the sake of looking like a more frugal person, I'm going to just go ahead and use my dagger. Hit him three times. That actually kills him. And uh, again, that was risky. If I wanted it to be a totally sure thing, I would have just uh, used that uh, dark magic to completely obliterate him. However, I was being careful, and I was also being a little bit risky. And I, I, I definitely had enough other characters stocked up after that move to have definitely blown this guy away. You'll see that I had Ulberic and Tressa just waiting in the wings, Ulberic having two boost points. And Tressa having zero, though. Ulberic using his spear boosted twice definitely would have killed this guy because he's got just physical strength like crazy. Anyway, hopefully that gives you some kind of a sense what these battles are like. And uh, again, it's a low-level battle. I know that if I would have shown you a higher-level, fancier battle from somewhat later in the game, that somebody would have been upset about spoilers, and reasonably so. I would have loved to have shown you a boss. Um, it's just... Uh, those are uh, quite exciting. And maybe you can look at this and use your imagination and just see that boss battles in this game can get pretty wild, and uh, I love them. And I gotta say, I love the mechanics of this game. I love just mixing and matching my party members and having a good time. The one thing you want to know, though, is when you choose your main character at the beginning of the game, that is your main character forever. You can't ever take them out of the party. So characters mesh well together. They have these group dynamics, groups of two, groups of three. A good group of four is definitely something that's great. Though keep in mind that when you do choose your main character, you can't take them out. So you're going to want somebody who's useful in a variety of scenarios. You're not going to feel too pinched with. So I'm playing through the game twice at the same time because there's something wrong with me. I've got Tressa in the lead of one of my parties, and I've got... Ophelia in the lead of the other one. Ophelia is more of a healer, and she casts holy magic, whereas Tressa is a dual weapon character who uses bows and spears. So bow and spear is a good combination to have at the same time. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking because I could talk about this all day. Octopath Traveler comes out like on Friday, or it's out already and you're watching this video. Um, anyway, yeah, I just thought I would show you that. Uh, bye. <laughs>